What's up guys, it's Paralyzer here, and today we're going to be doing a video on the Java-matic. As you can tell from the title, I'm going to be showing you how to do the Java-matic defense in Grounded. Now, the things I'm going to show you in this video are what you should build in order to do this defense, and the builds you should run in order to complete it. Now, in terms of builds, I'm only going to be using the resources that you find inside of the Java-matic storage facility right here. I took everything out of the facility and put it in the chest right here. As you can see, these are all the items that you will find inside of the facility, uh, ranging from mushroom bricks all the way to a bunch of random smoothies. Now, in terms of the pallet here, this is the weed stems that are inside. You are actually going to need more weed stems than this. If I pull up my thing here on the left, you will see the chopping list. You need about 200 weed stems that I used here. You don't need all of these, but you're going to need quite a lot. But luckily, these are all really close by. You can chop them down really easily. And if you have Hauling Hero, which is a mutation you can use to help you build this, then of course you do have a 20 hauling strength right now. So you should be able to carry 20 items anyway. So it should be really, really easy to just carry all these weed stems around, especially if you make a pallet, which is very easy to do. In terms of the other things that you'll need, you'll need crow feather pieces, mushroom bricks, spiky burrs, and pinecon pieces. All of these are in the storage facility, and there is enough of every single one of these resources that are in the chest here that you'll be able to find in the storage facility. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual build then, because that's what you're interested in, right? You want to know how you're going to defend it. So, these are the individual mixer things here, which you're going to be defending, obviously. Uh, what I did was essentially put up these mushroom walls and there are curved walls on the corners. So in order to build this, essentially what you're going to do is you'll start by doing the curved wall on either side of the mixer. Then you'll do the regular walls along the sides and then you'll do the curved walls on the other sides. So you have a perfect capsule around the mixer. It does take a little bit of trial and error to get it in the exact right spot but you should be able to build it like this. This is the hardest one to do here because this uh, module goes like on a tilt. So I had to do some half walls at the bottom here, uh, but there are mostly just full walls. And then I use the uh, crow feathers here to cover the side as well as the roof because you can get mosquitoes, obviously. The reason I'm covering the side is sometimes the enemies have a hard time hitting these uh, roofs and you're going to have uh, leftover crow feathers anyway. So you might as well use them for a bit of extra defense. Same thing here on this one. Uh, you're just going to use this. I used a few extra mushroom bricks to cover the side up here. Uh, sometimes the uh, wires or the modules will stick out a bit, so you're going to have to build using different things. Pine cones seem to be much, much taller, so you can see they have they have uh, like a higher arch on them, which means that if you can't build a crow feather roof, try building a pine cone roof and you'll probably be okay. Obviously, you do have enough pine cone pieces in the chest to afford a few of these pine cone roofs, which are going to be much, much stronger than the feather ones as well. So that's where all your feathers, your mushroom bricks, and your pine cones are going to be going. Uh, everything else is just weed stems for the most part. There's going to be a few mushroom bricks, like over here, for example, covering these different areas. But you're going to run out of mushroom bricks, so then you're just going to start using weed stems. Now, you're just going to make some basic weed stem walls. This will stop your enemies from getting through these barriers. Uh, they're going to have to break through it, which is going to slow them down a lot. Another thing I did, as you can see, there's just weed stem walls all over the place. Why have you done that? Well, the enemy AI in this game is really dumb. This works for mixers as well. If you just place a bunch of random walls around, the enemies are going to attack all of the random walls instead of actually attacking the mixer. They're just going to go for the walls because they think they have to attack them to get to the mixer. They're really, really stupid. They've got really bad AI. So again, we have a mushroom wall here. Then we just have two regular walls. Uh, the main enemies to start off the mixer are going to come from this side. I didn't put any walls here. It's a bit of a big area. So you can keep this side covered pretty easily just by standing here. Then over here again, just three layers of weed stem walls. And then the final area I put some weed stem walls was down here because there's a few dust mites that come from over here. Again, just three layers, nothing too crazy. Uh, it is a bit expensive, but there's weed stems over there. There's weed stems over there. There's weed stems over there. There's weed stems everywhere here. You will literally have no problem finding them. While you're doing this, use photo mode. Now, this is a crazy, crazy tip, I know, but essentially, if you're doing the mixer and you don't know where the next wave of enemies is coming from, and you're, say, relatively near the middle, go into camera mode real quick, and we can look around in the different areas to see where the enemies are. Now, this obviously pauses the game, so the enemies can't advance while you're in photo mode. So you're just going to look around, you're going to find the enemies, then, once you've found them, you unpause, and you can run straight to them without wasting any time whatsoever. It makes it much, much easier. And of course, the most important part here is what build are we going to use? Now, personally, I would recommend the Sour Battle Axe. 
The reason for this is the enemies are orc enemies, and all orc enemies are weak to sour damage. The sour battle axe does sour damage, obviously. In terms of armor, I would go with a full sleek set of fire ant armor for the extra corrosion damage. You could also use some sort of poison build here, but because the axe doesn't do poison damage, it's probably going to be easier if you use the fire ant build. It's just a good medium set of armor. You don't really need high defense here. You're more looking for an arm which is going to do good damage, which is what this is going to do, and the corrosion will obviously reduce the enemy defense as well. In terms of trinket, you could use the wondrous wormhole. Thor's Pendant is also an option. The reason I went with the Wondrous Wormhole is, again, it does do sour damage. It's just going to increase your damage even more on those enemies. So for those who don't know how this trinket works, essentially every hit you do to an enemy will do an extra 15 damage. Uh, and that 15 damage will be multiplied by the enemy's weakness to sour, which will either be 25 or 50%. So you can do about 20 extra damage every single hit. These are typically better with faster swinging weapons. But this is a good choice with the Sour Battle Axe, despite it being slow. Just for the extra damage, you're going to absolutely tear through enemies. In terms of mutations, obviously you're going to run Chopper for the Sour Battle Axe. That's another reason we're running the Sour Battle Axe, actually, is because the Chopper mutation is going to reduce your enemy's resistance by 25% to axes. Uh, and of course, a lot of enemies are resistant to axes, but with this mutation equipped, they are no longer resistant because this essentially removes the resistance. In terms of other mutations to use, I would probably recommend Coupe de Gras. Critting is always really nice to have, although if you want to be a little on the safer side, you could remove this and use spicy safety, as there are quite a few enemies which do do damage in the smashing and stabbing variations, which this will help reduce. Ant Annihilator is probably one I'd definitely go for, as there is a lot of worker and soldier ants, and this is going to make you do more damage to them and take less damage from them, and this is probably the majority of enemies in the raid. We're going to also have Natural Explorer. Now, obviously, this doesn't work when you're in combat, but you're going to be out of combat a lot, and you want to be able to traverse quickly between different areas. So for that reason, I would run this mutation so you can quickly cover ground to get to all the different enemies. Cardio Fan, of course, for that extra stamina recovery rate. It's always useful to have this mutation. It's one of my favorites in the game. You could also run the Mansteria Stranger for the Mant, or maybe Shocking Dismissal if you wanted a bit more shocking damage. If you're not a fan of two-handed weapons, then there's quite a few one-handed weapons you could use. For example, you could use a Sour Rusty Spear, you could use a Sour Widow Dagger, you could use a Sour Toenail Scimitar. Those are all very, very good options. Obviously, you'd have to change your mutations accordingly. For example, if you're using a Sour Widow Dagger, you could run a really strong Poison build. Uh, if you're using the Toenail Scimitar Sour, then obviously you want to run the Fire Ant Armor still, but you want to use Blade Master instead of Chopper. Now, obviously, we left the smoothies behind in the chest, so let's grab those. I also left the meal in the chest as well. Fun fact, if you leave this meal in the chest in the storage room, it actually won't decay, so you can leave it in there as long as you want until you're ready to take it and use it in the defense. You don't have to use a Black Ox Burger, but I'm going to use it just because it was in the chest to begin with. I don't have a bow, so I'm not going to bother with any of those arrows. I'd also recommend you bring some bandages, obviously. You could bring more smoothies than this. I'm just going to use the base smoothies that they gave to me and the base meal that they gave to me. And I don't feel I necessarily need anything more than that. Let's quickly change the settings so that we're on medium difficulty. We want player damage to be on, of course. We'll put stamina drain on. I'm not going to bother with hunger and thirst drain or durability because that is pointless. And let's get started. So, of course, you're just going to pop your Black Ox Burger. Nothing too crazy. I am going to take... Uh, actually, we'll leave on spicy safety. Why not? So you'll see here, these are the three modules that, of course, we have defended. I took a bit of fall damage there because I am stupid. So usually the first ant is going to come from this sort of direction. Uh, it's not this guy. You probably want to bring a fresh weapon with you just because these fireworker ants are just going to pop up randomly, uh, which is really annoying, but they just do that all the time. So here you are. Here's the first set of ants. You'll see here, I just hit them. Two hits and they're gone. That's how easy this method is. You can two hit the ants. Wasn't even an issue. Like, some of the stronger enemies later on might be a bit tougher, but I think we'll be fine. Okay, so we do have a firefly here. Now, these guys aren't too difficult. Uh, you might want to bring a bow or something to take them on, but you don't need to. They usually do fly pretty low during this, so you should be able to take them out really easily. Uh, as you can see there, a charged attack is also enough to take out one of the ants, which is nice. And you'll see the ants are still very dumb. They're attacking all of the random walls that I placed around. They don't even care about the actual mixers. The AI in this game is really stupid. They just go for the wrong thing every single time. Okay, so here we have our first dangerous enemy, which is a ladybird. We're just going to perfect block. And as you can see, the uh, attacks themselves do a good amount of damage. There's also a firefly here, which is a bit dangerous. But you're just going to have to take him out. See how much damage I just did there with one combo? 
one combo is doing like entire like 20% of his health or more. This thing just absolutely tears through them. I wouldn't usually use this weapon too much, but for this defense in particular, it is probably the best weapon to go for. It's just uh, a little expensive to craft. So again, the game typically tells me where the enemies are. There's a little orc marker over here, which tells me there's an enemy. Ah, look. There's a fire soldier ant. Again, these guys should be easy. You have Annihilator on. You have your sour axe. You just tear through them in one combo. Uh, obviously, the Tiger Mosquito, also weak to chopping. Those guys just get one comboed like a lot of the other weaker enemies. So that was nice and easy. You'll love to see it. That's another reason we pick a chopping weapon is because we dislike the flying enemies. Here we have one of the more powerful enemies, the Black Ox Beetle. Um, you will have trouble with his rock attack since you can't block that as you don't have a uh, shield. But you will be able to stun this guy really easily because this is one of the highest stun weapons in the game. And just like that... Just a little over three combos, and he is gone. Two combos was enough to stun him there. You see he didn't even get an attack in, apart from that initial rock attack, which I dodged. Then I did two combos and stunned him before he could even get a proper attack in, and it was fight over. Easy peasy. I've barely even gotten a hit this entire time. I've basically been at full health. You got the Orc Dust Mites. These guys are just a little annoying. They're going to damage you pretty much guaranteed. You just have to kind of tank it and just go in and hit them. Um, again, they are also weak to chopping, so the axe is another... Uh, another plus for the axe right there as you can see here the reason i walled off this area is because every once in a while an, an enemy will come across the wire here but again they're very easy to deal with especially with it walled off they struggle to get across so we are completely fine i understand with more players it would be more difficult but with more players you can also cover more areas and you can also use turrets which i would highly recommend and shoot the fire rounds uh, at the ground to cover around the areas to stop any enemies getting towards them Another thing I forgot to mention earlier at the start of the defense is that you should have a lean to somewhere and you should set your respawn point at it. Just in case you do die, I do believe you'll be able to respawn at your lean to, meaning it will be much, much easier to recover and you're not going to have to come back all the way from your base or something just to get over here. You're going to make sure you want some sort of a respawn point nearby so that if something does go wrong, you can indeed respawn here. Again, Bombardier Beetles. This is going to be another enemy that we have that is just going to be easy to kill. It's just four hits and they're gone. Very, very easy. Again, another enemy that is in this raid that is weak to chopping damage. You'll notice a lot of them are weak to chopping. And we have the Ant Annihilator for the ants. That covers virtually every enemy. The only enemies it doesn't cover is the Black uh, Ox Beetles, who I think are actually resistant to chopping, but it doesn't really make a difference. It also doesn't cover the Ladybirds, the two biggest enemies in the thing, but it doesn't really matter. Because like I said, four combos takes out a Black Ox Beetle. Watch, I'll show you. We've got a Ladybird and a Black Ox Beetle here. So I'm just going to block him. We do one combo. Easy peasy. He's going to attack. And then you go for the second combo, which stuns him. Then you go for the third combo. Then you wait for your stamina a little bit. And then the fourth combo finishes him off. Easy peasy. Wasn't even a challenge. I just had to perfect block two attacks. Ladybird, perfect block. Then we go in with a full combo. Then we perfect block on the second attack of our second combo. And then just like that, we get all our stamina back. And it's easy peasy. The ladybird's gone as well. Just took on the two hardest enemies at once. And it wasn't even close. I didn't even get hit. Obviously, there's a little bit of skill required with the perfect blocking. But even if you can't perfect block, you can just hold down block. And you'll be able to block a majority of attacks. Or, like I mentioned earlier, use a one-handed weapon. Uh, a termite axe could actually be a really good choice as well. Which was one I didn't mention. As it is a tier 3 one-handed axe. And with Chopper, it will be very, very effective against a majority of the enemies in this defense. And as we're coming to a close here, you can see I've only used one beefy slop right then. And two of the sticky slops, other than that, haven't had to use a smoothie the entire time. Which makes it really, really easy. I didn't need any buff smoothies or anything. I didn't use any bandages because I didn't have any on me. And that was really, really simple. Really wasn't difficult whatsoever. The uh, final defense is pretty easy, but a few people have asked for this video. That's why I made a build on how to defend it using only the resources in the storage facility. There you have it. That is the end of the video. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next grounded video.